Based upon Chief Parker's request for National Guard support, planning was initiated for the employment of 500 National Guardsmen. However, because of the continuing deteriorating situation in the Rye area, the troop requirement was expanded to approximately 1,000 men by that afternoon when the proclamation was signed and the order for the Guard to assemble was disseminated. Among the elements of the 40th Armor Division, which were initially called for riot duty, was the 1st Battalion of the 160th Infantry, located in Glendale, California. typical infantry battalion. The men were armed with rifles and bayonets and with their usual protective equipment, including gas masks. Additional ammunition and tear gas was obtained from a local military facility to equip this battalion for riot control duty. These men are typical citizen soldiers. The strength of the battalion was approximately 600, and of those, about 400 went into action almost immediately. It took less than two hours to assemble the battalion at its armory, and they were dispatched in their organic vehicles to a site close to the riot area. The men were briefed, issued additional equipment and ammunition, and were in the riot area by 10 p.m. that night. As the men assembled, some of the procedures they were to follow were rehearsed in the armory. All of the National Guardsmen employed in the riot area had received basic training. None of the men had experienced riot control, however. Many of the officers and non-commissioned officers had fought with the division or other active army units during World War II or the Korean emergency. The directions to the personnel of the division were based on the order to use the minimum amount of force necessary to contain the problem. This particular organization was one of six battalions which were employed the night of Friday the 13th. Additional elements of the division, en route to their respective training sites at Camp Roberts for two weeks' annual field training, were diverted and returned to the Los Angeles area the next morning. By noon of Saturday, there were in excess of 5,000 men of the 40th Armor Division employed in the riot area. By Saturday night, additional elements of the division had been returned and some infantry elements of the 49th Infantry Division had been flown in from the northern part of the state. personnel employed typical riot control tactics and weapons. Shotguns and low-velocity rifles, dilly clubs and their standard sidearms, items with which the military normally is not equipped.
the National Guard employed no armored vehicles or tanks. Some of the one-quarter ton trucks had machine guns mounted, and in only two instances was it necessary to employ those. tremendous amount of damage that was done to the area, somewhere in excess of $250 million, it became difficult for the citizens who were living in the area to continue any kind of normal activity. Utilities were disrupted, food became scarce, and traffic and transportation was curtailed and, in some cases, eliminated. The 40th Armored Division was fortunate in having a number of police officers as members of the division. Their assistance and liaison helped tremendously in working with law enforcement agencies. A curfew and blockade of the entire area was imposed and lasted in excess of 48 hours. Civilian cooperation was generally outstanding. National Guard troops were billeted in schools, armories, and in the famous Hollywood Park racetrack, which was a major staging area for National Guard troops. Hollywood Park also provided ideal facilities for use of light aviation. Schools were not in session and would have been a primary target for looters. The National Guard troops had their own field equipment and, of course, were provided rations from local military installations and, in some instances, from commercial vendors. Essentially, units operated as tactical units in the field. It was determined that when National Guard personnel were present, that the riotous activity subsided appreciatively. Following the departure of National Guard troops from the area, looters and rioters would return to the scene. Therefore, it became necessary to deploy personnel not only around the area, but actually in the area. The attitude of the majority of the residents toward the military was good. In many instances, they openly expressed themselves as being pleased that the military had been called. As the riotous activity subsided, patrols became more aggressive and soon curtailed the rioting, looting, and burning to isolated incidents. As the 49th Infantry Division elements moved down into the area, they assisted materially in containing the disturbances and then relieved the elements of the 40th Armored Division who were able to proceed to their annual field training site and conduct the remaining two weeks of their active duty training. All elements of the 49th Infantry Division were relieved by the following weekend within 10 days of the initial outbreak. difficult periods were those of evening and night hours. During the daylight hours, control was much more effective and more readily established.
This is an example of a BB gun with a sleeve attached to the muzzle into which can be inserted a shotgun shell which is activated by the firing of the air rifle and is very effective at short range. or chase out looters. The guardsmen would withdraw from the building and advise individuals in the building that they were going to employ tear gas if they didn't come out. They then used the gas after every other method of extracting individuals from the building Two hundred and thirty two businesses were destroyed and six hundred and thirty two businesses were damaged. Considering all types of structures, two hundred and forty two buildings were destroyed and six hundred and forty four were damaged. weapons taken from the rioters and looters. The weapons were brought in, identified, tagged, classified, and stored. The number and types of weapons was truly amazing. Among the weapons confiscated were a great many Molotov cocktails of the simplest yet very effective design. It is estimated that the majority of these weapons were obtained during or immediately prior to the rioting activity. And certainly a great many of them were actually stolen or looted from the buildings in the area. While there were a great many shots fired at police, firemen, and National Guardsmen, the few hits indicated a lack of familiarity of the individual with the weapon he was using and again supported the contention that most of them had been acquired during the riot. 851 guns were recovered, of which 174 were rifles, 286 shotguns, 391 handguns. The death toll was 34, and over 1,000 persons were injured as the result of the riot. Governor Brown returned from abroad and came to the area on the first of the following week. He was escorted into the area, but because of the difficulties with certain of the hotspots, he was unable to complete a tour of the entire riot area. Many relief agencies, Salvation Army, church groups, Red Cross, came into the area and distributed food parcels soon after the worst of the rioting had been concluded. The 40th Armored Division employed nearly 8,000 officers and men to quell the riots. Of these, approximately 400 were Negro Guardsmen, whose performance of duty in this explosive situation was outstanding. 
In retrospect, the riots were the single most devastating disaster to befall Los Angeles in its long history. The total cost in misery and unhappiness can never be calculated.